Hey, 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 giddy. Good evening, guys, and welcome back. It's just me, Star Cub. Now, this is going to be my review for tonight, and it's on a horror movie which me and the husband watched last night, and I can honestly say, what the fuck did we just watch? Um... Before I get into it, uh, thanks to everybody um, that is new for tuning in. Thank you so much. I hope you find something funny in this review. Um, I'm hoping to, because it's, it's a doozy. And all those returning, thanks so much, guys. I really, really appreciate it. Now, let's get into it. It's a movie from 1990. It's an Italian slasher horror film. It was actually filmed in December of 89, but wasn't released until 1990. Like I said, it's an Italian slasher horror film. And it is directed by, let me check my notes, Claudio Fra Fragasso. And, and his wife, Rosella Drudy. Now... Being that these, the wife and husband duo that directed it are Italian, their English is very, very poor. Now, with that being said, um, this is actually set in the, is actually set in Virginia Beach. Um... But, and this is the doozy, is that it says it is set in Virginia Beach, but it was actually shot in Norfolk. Um, that's right, you heard correctly, it was actually shot in Norfolk. So when you actually look at it, it doesn't have, it doesn't look anything like Virginia Beach. Granted, I only know what Virginia Beach looks like, you know, now as opposed to looking like what it was back in, uh, you know, 89, 90. Um, but it, it is shot in Norfolk and not Virginia Beach. Um, so that's, that's one, that's one thing. And the other thing too is that this, the, these two were both inspired by Giallo films and generic slasher horror films. Now, it's supposed to be a mixture of the two, Giallo and Slasher. Now, we all know from other horror film directors, uh, Di uh, Dario Argento, Lucio Fulci, that they have a particular star when it comes to Giallo. And we all know what Giallo is. But these two obviously have no frickin' idea what the fuck they were doing, um, because, yeah, it was all over the joint. It, uh, no shit, it was all over the joint. The acting was atrocious. Atrocious. Um, I'll give you the basic premise. It was basically promoted as being a part of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise, when in actual fact, it had nothing to do with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise at all. They were jumping off the success of that, because, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre being big and all, um, and it shares no, no um, similarities to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre at all. The basic premise is, um, this film is called Night Killer. For reference, it is called Night Killer. Uh, and this is the other doozy. The basic premise of it is, is a woman is stalked by a serial killer wearing a deformed mask. Look, looks like a zombie sort of creature with long ass zombie like claws that he plunges into the victim's chests. Um, and the, he basically stalks a woman 
um, that he saves for La, that he's wanting to save her and save for his last kill. So he stalks her, he kidnaps her, and it's this whole torture, torment thing. But he kills other people as well along the way while stalking her. But he doesn't kill anyone at night. It's all done during the day. What the fuck? And it's called Night Killer. What? Um, yeah. So this killer kills two people before she sees it on screen in the TV. She sees it screening on the news and then she becomes all rattled. But there's so it's so disjointed and I can see where they were trying to get the giallo aspects of it while also trying to be slasher. But it is highly entertaining for just being ridiculously fucking funny. There's long ass pauses where, you know, how normal people, you know, how normal people in a horror film scream. Well, this one, it's long ass shots of the main, the main chick in it, main female, screaming as she goes, no, 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 please not me, no. And it's long ass drag of her screaming and just more screams and more screams. There's a long ass winded shots of uh, her fondling herself in front of a mirror while she's daydreaming. And it's just, it's long ass shots like that, that have an aspect of Giallo, but it's not filmed in the right way, like camera angles or anything like that to even establish that it's a giallo, but you can see the aspects of where it, it, it where they're trying to make it a giallo while also trying to be a generic slasher film at the same time. And this killer is lazy, pure lazy. He speaks like this on the phone while he's stalking her. It's fucking horrible. I couldn't help but laugh and laugh and laugh. Now, the actors and actresses in it were terrible. All of them, goddamn terrible. So, it basically stars Tara Buckman, Peter Hooten, and Richard Foster. All of them are terrible. Absolutely terrible. The pacing is weird. It is extremely weird. The gore and that in it as well is not particularly outstanding. When he does the kills, there's no blood. There's small where they do where he either cuts or, you know, slits a throat or something like that, where you can see where the whole giallo aspect comes in with, you know, the close up of the skin as it opens up and then blood leaks out. But it's not enough to substantiate, you know, being a giallo or a generic slasher as well. There's no horror in it whatsoever, in my opinion. It's more of a comedy horror. So, there's that. The... It's just, it's really, really, the acting is atrocious, and I just can't believe it got made. And for the two of them, the husband and wife, being Italian, and they don't know much English, it's extremely disappointing to see that, you know, they had high hopes for a mixture of Giallo and General Slasher when they didn't even get the concept of either of them. They really didn't. And no offence to them, but they really didn't. And the actors and actresses in this film, oh my God, especially the lead, Tara Buckman, she was horrible. She was damn right horrible. Uh, it was laughable. Her character was laughable. Everything about it was laughable. It's basically... Uh, he kills people, this killer kill, calls himself a night stalker, kills, himself, kills people during the day, not at night, kills two people that open up the film, and then it opens up with her, you know, there's a whole subplot as well where she has a daughter, um, her husband's nowhere near to be seen at all in this film, and we know she has a husband, um, but she hands her little girl off to a friend who goes with his wife on a weekend trip. And then obviously she's 
in the house alone and then all this weird shit starts happening where she's stalked. She's, you know, just, you know, like I said, there's a thing, a thing in there where she's fondling herself and at one point her breasts are exposed and she's playing with her breasts and it's like, it's so long-winded in front of a mirror, looking outside and you don't know the context of why she's even doing it. Half these, half of them is, it's, I, I really cannot say anything more about this film. It is absolutely horrible. And it's basically, in, I'll, I'll, in my notes, it's basically a, um, a psychopathic maniac costumed in a grotesque hood matched with a sharp clawed glove is stalking the women of Virginia Beach, uh, killing them in a violent spree of, a violent spree of misogynistic murders that terrorise the city. That's the basic premise. And then Melanie Beck, who's played by Tara Buckman, um, a devoted mother and wife, narrowly survives a violent kidnapping and rape. And then from there, you can guess where it goes. I'm not going to give any more away of what I've written in my notes, because that's the basic premise. You guys have to go out and watch it. It's on Tubi. I would suggest going watching it on Tubi. It is funny just for a laugh, and you can see where the jelly aspects come in. But other than that, this film is really, really horrible and laughable. And when I got to the end of it, there's a decent. It has a decent enough premise, and I think if it had more gore and was aimed at being more violent, I could see this movie being a real, real go-getter, especially if it was aiming for Giallo and a slasher at the same time. Could have done wonders. There is a really unique twist in it that comes towards the end. And then there's a final twist right at the end of the film, uh, which I'm not going to give away, but it basically sets up what I think could have been such a great film had the rest of the film been great. All right, I'm going to leave it there, guys. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys had a laugh with this one. Because I certainly did. <laughs> I really enjoyed this one. Um, this uh, review. Uh, yeah, Night Stalker. Uh, what do I rate it? Uh, I give it one and a half stars. One and a half. I'm being generous. One and a half. One, one and a half out of ten. One and a half out of ten. One and a half out... Yeah. One and a half out of ten. That's, that's it. That's basically it. Uh, but other than that, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Um, I will have some more videos up in the next couple of days and yeah, uh, have a great night everybody and I will see you all very soon with the next one. Um, if you like this video, don't forget to click like, the, the subscribe button and the notification button to keep up to date with everything. Um, that would be really, really appreciated. I really, really, really appreciate the support guys. Other than that, thanks so much. Have a great evening, and I'll see you all very soon with the next one. All right, bye. Virginia Beach Police Department. Officer Gabrielle here. I just got a phone call from a guy spying on me. Was it a seen phone call? Yes. You threatened him? Yes. <laughs> She doesn't remember anybody or anything. All of the victims were raped before they were tortured, mutilated, and killed by the masked maniac.